10. Nemo urges everyone to observe the national shutdown commencing from 8.30 p.m. Sunday, June 30th, 2024, and to remain safely indoors until the all clear is given. At the stands right now, we have 161 shelters on island. Persons seeking admission to shelters should have a conversation with the district disaster committee members as to the placement in shelters. For St. Lucia, we tropical. can expect tropical storm force winds. Uh, we can experience some gusts that would put it into the category of possible hurricanes. I have been informed by the Lucia Met Office that at 8 p.m. today, the tropical storm warning for St. Lucia was discontinued. I have instructed that the Ministry of Infrastructure conduct an island-wide assessment of damage to national infrastructure and report to me in seven days so that the rebuilding efforts can commence. 9. Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre toured the west coast of the island to assess the damage caused by Hurricane Beryl. Sufre experienced the full force of the storm surge from major Hurricane Beryl. Dangerous waves smashed through businesses and homes along the waterfront, leading to widespread damage. The Prime Minister joined Honorable Emma Hippolyte on the ground in Sufre to get first-hand accounts from affected residents and the business community. Eight. In the aftermath of Hurricane Beryl, the Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development, Honorable Alfred Prosper, along with officials from the Ministry of Agriculture, conducted site visits across the island to assess the impact of the hurricane. Minister Prosper's visits included various farms and fishing villages, where he engaged directly with the affected communities. So I want to encourage them to stay strong. We will do the best we can to continue to provide the support. But I am really, really sorry to see every time that we are getting them to that level where they can begin to generate irregular income, natural disasters coming. Seven. Members, volunteers, staff of the St. Lucia Red Cross. Over the last few days, you would have noticed for yourself the damage and devastation caused by Hurricane Beryl. For some of you, the impact and feeling of despair is even more personal as you have immediate loved ones who have been affected. The most urgent needs include water, canned foods, personal hygiene items, blankets, sleeping bags, pillows, cleaning sets, flashlights, and batteries. Six. The U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID, the Youth Resilience, Inclusion, and Empowerment Wiry Program, in collaboration with the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice and Empowerment, has launched the Community Reentry Program, CREP, to address the critical gap in cross-agency support for the rehabilitation and reintegration of adult offenders. I'm happy that I, the first component of the CREP program is where they provide the psychosocial support to the individuals. This is a very essential part of reintegrating individuals into society. When we can be less judgmental about our people, and view them differently, then we are on the road to achieve great success. Five. The St. Lucian delegation comprised of the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Sharon Belmar George, and Senior Budget Analyst, Ms. Merlicia Collymore, who attended the high level meeting on international dialogue on sustainable financing for NCDs and mental health. Non-communicable diseases and mental health has been included in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development with the commitment to reduce premature mortality from non-communicable diseases by one-third through the prevention, treatment and promotion of mental health and well-being by 2030. Four. Efforts to identify and address gaps in developmental opportunities for St. Lucian youth resulted in implementation of the Ignite Learning Business by Doing Business project. A multi-phase initiative, 48 participants recently completed the six-week-long Getting Ready phase, the first in a series of implementation stages. In the first phase called the Getting Ready phase, 
participants engaged in soft or essential skills, academic and technical and vocational training. 3. The Sufra Regional Development Foundation remains committed to advancing the cause of education in Sufra. To this end, the SRDF has launched its flagship scholarship book bursary program for the year 2024. We want to ensure that as many people as possible are able to apply for the program. Uh, we always ensure that we recognize the hard work of top performers in the district, but also these bursaries, the book donations, they're also given out based on need. And so we want every family that is in need of this kind of support from the SRDF to have an opportunity to apply. Two. Amaru St. Omer, Montessori Center 97.6 and Mary's College. Adwit Joshi, the Montessori Center 97.6, St. Mary's College. Gia Joseph Dimpolet Luizzi, 97.8, St. Joseph's Convent. Imaya Mirajkar, the Montessori Center 99.4, St. Joseph's Convent. And the child who topped the 2024 CPA exam is Jamie Pamela Devo of the Montessori Center with 99.8. One. Hello, my name is Zenia Douglas. And my name is Andretti George. And we are your hosts for the Virtual Emancipation Launch 2024. As we approach the third annual Emancipation Month celebrations, it's worth remembering that the decision to hold the three consecutive annual monthly celebrations was a manifestation of the government's vision for emancipation upon taking office. In fact, the decision was announced in the very first address by the Prime Minister to the nation, only five days after the July 26th general elections, and even before his cabinet was sworn in. 